Well, hello everybody. Hello guys. How's it going? Uh, welcome back to the Sumo Digital Studios. We are once again talking more Snake Pass. Um, I am David Dino, uh, designer, analyst, and snake charmer, as you can see over there on the card. And of course, we have the designer and creator of Snake Pass. Once again, Seb Lise. Hello. How are you doing? Did I say that right? Good, yeah. Yeah, oh, that's correct. Good. All right. You would think so. <laughs> I should know this by now. But um, we are here to talk about how to control Snake Pass. Um, gotten a lot of, uh, as we get closer and closer to release we've gotten a lot of questions about how does noodle actually control and whatnot and the thing is it's a lot simpler than it seems it may look really complicated because you know it's a snake he's moving around left and right some people ask oh is it automated no you are controlling everything and with several simple controls Seb will show you how you control noodle how you can start thinking like a snake so if you don't mind go ahead and start in please what do yeah. we have first? Um, so let's start with the, the basic controls. Uh, let's look at what the sticks do. Uh, first of all, uh, it can start moving the right stick. And as you can see, it will rotate the camera around. Just like any old platformer, really. Mm -hmm. uh, then the left stick will start controlling his head. As you can see, I'm just wiggling it left and right, and it repositions his head. You can oh, sort cool. of point it in a direction. And this is camera relative, which means if I point up now, he's going to face away from the screen. If I rotate the camera and point up, again, he's going to face away from the screen. So the, the controls change depending on your camera right, angle, or relative right. to your camera angle. That's always good to know. And considering we were talking about camera angles as well, um, are there choices for inverted controllers? Yes, so inverted personally I, I like yes. it uninverted. So yeah. if I move my right stick up, I, I look up. But yeah, there's an option in the controls to invert the camera. Excellent, as well. excellent. So does that mean I've been playing with non-invert the whole time? Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> Maybe I'll finally jump the, you know, Maybe you'll the dark make the side transition over there. Yeah. Finally. But for those who like to play with the inverted camera controls, it is there for you. You can, yeah. Yes, definitely. So, so how do we get moving? Well, the left stick exactly only moves the head. Right. So it, it points you in a direction. And then the key is to use the right trigger to stretch out your body. So mm -hmm. in this case, I'm all coil curled up. So if I press the right trigger, I will get quite a bit of momentum because all those curves can be stretched out. Yeah. But as you can see, as soon as the curves are done, I'm going really slow. Right. Snakes don't move like that in real life anyway, right? A snake can't move in a real snake can't move in a straight line. Yeah. It was a little bit too punishing for the game. So instead, you move really slow in mm -hmm. a straight line. Okay. But as soon as you use the left stick combined with the right trigger to create curves in your body, right, you can get speed. So in, in like I think you mentioned this before, but you're essentially constricting and releasing that gigantic muscle. Yeah, 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 it's, it's like really the yeah. snake body is essentially one giant muscle, and mm -hmm. just like any old muscle, before you can stretch it out, you have to bend it first, or the other way around. Before mm -hmm. you can bend it, you have to stretch it first. So in this case, before I can stretch out my snake to get anywhere, I right. need to bend it first using the left stick to create curves. Cool. And if you combine these two things, the left trigger, uh, the right trigger and the left yep. stick, you get this signature snake pass movement. And uh, depending on what console of your choice as well, it'll be the R2 button if it's a PlayStation 4. I believe it's ZR on the Switch as well. So Yeah, the, the big trigger. Yes, exactly. The, the gas pedal, and mm -hmm. which is sort of also acts as yes. you hold the right trigger to accelerate. Yeah, we say it's like controlling a weird car, isn't it? Yeah, a weird car that can only drive in... <laughs> In wiggly lines. They're like drifting almost in a way. Kind of. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, on top of that, there's actually one more control uh, for the basic movement that is, and that's just the A button, which lifts his head. So right. the button that you usually use to jump in most platforming games in our game, you use that just to lift your head. And if I, you didn't, I didn't even connect those two actually, that lifting the head is almost essentially jumping, but yeah. you don't really jump in this game. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. But it is in a logical spot. And if you then combine that button uh, with the trigger, you start getting mo mo movement forwards while holding your head up, and if you then combine that with the left stick, you get the full 360 mm -hmm. degrees control. Get a little and snake then, dance going on yeah. as well. Yeah. <laughs> that's sweet. So yeah, that's those are essentially the three basic controls that you need to know in order to move noodle around, right? Yeah, that, that, that's the most basic movement you can do with mm -hmm. those three, and even more complicated things like wrapping around stuff like I'm doing now. Yeah. It's only using those three controls. Excellent. And you have full control 
of what's happening right there. Like we said, nothing is animated at all, correct? Yeah, yeah, the, well, the face animations. Yeah. But, I, but even them, I have a little bit control of. I can uh, use the directional buttons. Oh, that's right, yeah. Change the expressions on the, the snake. Yeah, so, so if you like role playing and you get, you're about to do a scary challenge, you can make them look extra scary before mm -hmm. you do it. And, and then when you made it, you can make them extra cheerful. Nice. And you, so you have different levels of um, animation, of feeling anyway, yeah. depending on how many times you press up, down, left, right, on the D-pad, or whatever, you know, console <laughs> controller that you're particularly Indeed. using. Cool. So all those complicated things like wrapping under, wrapping over, so on and so forth, those are just done with those three controls, like we said. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, that's... That's also where terms uh, a part of the difficulty curve come from. Mm -hmm. If you give the controller to a new player, a lot, most of them will just want to hold the right yes. trigger and just go, go, go. But the key to the more complicated climbing is to really think about when to use which button and really only use the right trigger when you're ready to move again. Mm -hmm. So you, uh, I'll show it on this slightly more complicated bit here. What I'm doing is I'm constantly repositioning myself until I, I feel like I'm in a good position to move mm -hmm. again. So in this case, I'm pressing the A button to get up, then the right trigger to make the wrap around. And then mm -hmm. I'm releasing it instantly everything again and make another wrap around. Mm -hmm. So it, it's, it's very much a subtle way of, of using the buttons at the right time rather than just holding everything and trying to bolt somewhere. Yeah. And if we go back to the car analogy, you wouldn't necessarily take a really tight turn just by holding the accelerator all the way through. No, exactly. Yeah. Then you would just crash. Mm -hmm. You just want to essentially kind of feather it, let go the whole nine. You take your time really more than anything else. Because it does take a bit to really think like a snake, but of course there are some players who just immediately get into it because they've yeah. always known that they've had that inner snake in them the whole time. <laughs> yeah, so, and in a way there's also, there's no bo button to let your head go down. Right. So there's always gravity that has to do that for you. So essentially, not pressing the A button is also a move. In this case, mm -hmm. like I'm pressing the A button to go up, and then I'm releasing the A button to go down again. Right. So yeah, there's a, it, it looks complicated, but there's a very natural progression to learning this stuff. And if you play the game for 15 minutes, you'll do a lot of this stuff intuitively. Yeah, exactly. And I think there's another um, control that we haven't mentioned as well, uh, even though you kind of just Cut that Spoiled really quickly. It. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. Um, just again, if we, once again we go back to the car analogy, we do have an accelerator, and in a sense, we also have a brake as well. And I believe that is the grip mechanics. Too. Yeah, that's uh, the last button. It's the left trigger. Uh, if you press the left trigger, you can see Noodle makes a, a difficult face, and what it actually does is it, it tenses all his muscles, so he will try to stay in the position that he is. Right. If you try to use it in a position that you lost anyway, it's not going to save mm -hmm. you. But it's, it's very much um, useful to... I, I personally use it sort of as a panic button. When I feel like, ooh, I'm not sure if I'm going to make that, and I quickly press the ref left trigger, right. and he will try to stay where he is, and that will save you uh, most of the time. And it's uh, definitely best used when you kind of have that loop around a particular bamboo pole or something like that, correct? Yeah. Because it's, I mean, the, the, the more... Uh, points of contact you have, the better the grip will be. Exactly, yeah. And that, that, that's just in general with you know, trying to climb things as well. The more points of contact you have, the easier it will be for Noodle to, uh -huh. I guess, you know, scale all these things, so on and so forth. Yeah, a real snake, if he wants to climb up something, he needs a lot of points of contact with his body, and that's the core mechanic of climbing in this game as mm -hmm. well. The more, the more percentage of your body is, is touching things, the more control you will have and the more powerful you will be. Right, right. And I believe there is one more thing we haven't talked about as well. We see this little hummingbird doodle flying all over the place. What is his function? Well, he tells the, the story of the game and uh, he helps you out. He explains you how to play the game initially. Right. But he also has a practical uh, application, uh, which is on the, the Y button, the mm -hmm. top button on the joypad. If you tap that, he will fly in and pick up your tail. And if you tap it again, you will release. You can do this as many times as you want, yeah. right? You can okay. do it whenever you want, uh, except for when your tail is underwater, right. or the bird, uh, the doodle cannot directly reach your tail, uh -huh. then he will refuse to do it. Okay. But most of the time, he will just do it. Oh, cool. And that's very useful, especially uh, in situations where noodle is struggling with his tail. Like, it's a physics-based game, and the tail has weight to it, so when, when you're stuck in a situation like this, it can be quite difficult to uh -huh. get up again. 
and you can alleviate that by tapping the, the Y button and in this case the hummingbird will lift up your tail which nice. will make it much quicker and much easier to get up ledges like mm -hmm. that. And I believe people, in terms of speed running as well, because we do have time trials and everything like that, people actually use uh, Doodle, I guess, theorizing that yeah. the, the less drag there is on, on the body of the snake, it makes you faster. Yeah, we still haven't figured out exactly within the studio what is precisely the fastest way to move. Some people think that having a Doodle pick up your tail and then w make short wiggles is the fastest way. Yeah. Uh, I personally still think that getting the perfect slither Rhythm mm -hmm. is the fastest way. I like doing the lift corkscrew and dropping the head. Yeah, this is one uh, for a bit momentum. That you yeah, see that a lot of people also do. I'm not convinced that it's actually fast. <laughs> but we'll see once the game is out and yeah, the speedrunners exactly. get their hands on it. We'll, we'll know for sure what's the fastest way to move. <laughs> for some, for you know, they like to find completely different ways of moving around too. So I'm sure we'll see something as well. It's like, wow, I didn't think about that. Yeah. We've seen this game <laughs> far too often, obviously, in the past year. But it's great to see people play really all in different ways too. There, I don't think there really is a wrong way of playing uh, Snake Pass because we all do it differently here at the studio. So really, uh, hopefully... It's just a few buttons uh, used in a new way and yeah, it will take 15 minutes or so to really get the hang of it. But yeah. that's, that even learning it, those 15 minutes are fun. Like It's just so new and refreshing yeah. to have the character like that. Because that in itself is a puzzle <laughs> yeah. anyway, just trying to figure out how to really think like a snake. And like we said, some people will pick it up faster than others, but it, altogether I think people will, who get their hands on Snake Pass on the 28th um, in the US and the 29th in, in Europe of March, um, they'll definitely be able to harness their inner snake really and, and realize that the controls aren't that hard. <laughs> at think all. like a yeah. snake. Yeah. Definitely think like a snake. So. I think we can pretty much end it on that note. Hopefully, if you have any other questions, feel free to let us know on our Twitter, which is snake underscore patch. You can also hit us up on this uh, on YouTube as well in the comment section um, and anywhere else that we happen to be on to Facebook, Snake Pass Game, so on and so forth. So from the Snake Pass team, um, thank you very much for watching. I am David Dino, and this is Seblis. Hopefully, we'll see you, uh, see you on, on Snake Pass. <laughs> Later, guys.